Oxwave now features a streaming radio media player on our website's front page where local artists can get their music played 24 7. For more information on getting your music in rotation or to perform live at our studio, contact Reg Gaskins at 240-832-4455. Android users, the Voxwave app is now available in the Google Play Store. Download the app today on your Android device to listen in and view programs. Business owners, looking for a place to advertise your business and promote your products and services? Voxwave is the right place. We have over 10,000 views a day and 70,000 listeners a month. For more information, contact Reg Gaskins at 240-832-4455. The world's number one streaming music station, Voxwave.com. We have your favorite shows on Voxwave.com. Check out our lineup. The Kim Show, Mondays, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. In the end, we win with Curtis, Mondays, 8.15 p.m. to 9.15 p.m. Cooking with Flavors with your host, Chef Flavors, Tuesday, 5.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Slick Daddy Rick, Heartbeat Congo Hour, Tuesday, 8 to 10 p.m. Impact the World Radio TV Show with Cheryl Woods, Wednesday, 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. The Digital Digest with your host, Digital Ace, Wednesdays, 3 to 5 p.m. Live Set Wednesdays with your host, Frank Dent, Wednesdays, 8 to 9 p.m. The BGKH Show with your hosts, Dominion and Epic, Wednesdays, 9.15 to 10.15 p.m. You, Math, and Me with George Randall, Thursdays, 10 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Then, on Thursdays at 5.30 p.m., The Prayer, Praise, and Deliverance with Elder Thurman Gorman, Jr. The 6.40 Evening Show, Thursdays, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. The Peace in the Morning Show with your host, Darius A. Stan, co-host, Delicate Daryl Barnes, and Queen Ayakadobi, Fridays, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. The Hall Street Journal with your host, Robert Hall, and co-host Clarence Sanders. Fridays, 10.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Frank, The Success Principles. Friday, 12 noon to 1 p.m. Chanel's Three Cents. Friday, 1.30 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. The Daryl Allen Harrison II Crime Victims Foundation Show. Hosted by Daryl Harrison II. Every Friday from 3 to 4.30 p.m. The Rush Hour with DJ Drew and Janique. Every Friday from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Different Minds Show. Hosted by DJ Bam640 and DJ Andre Michael. And your co-host, MC Fran. Every Friday, 9.15 p.m. to 11.15 p.m. The Healer Blue Show. We'll host Ron Jackson. Every Saturday, 8 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. Hour of Power. With your host, Reverend Winters Rogers. Every Saturday, 9.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. And again, the prayer, praise, and deliverance with Elder Thurman Gorman Jr., Saturday, 11 p.m. to 12 p.m. And don't forget Four Sisters Live Talk, Saturday at 12.30 to 2.30 p.m. Turning dreams into reality talk show with your host, Tashika L. Green, every second Saturday, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Walk in newness 24-7 with Missionary Antoinette. Saturdays, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. News, ULN. News and analysis, information, sports, and black history. With your news anchor, Roderick Carter-Willis. 4.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Step your game up with the Youth Project. Hosted by DJ Maine and DJ Lo Jefe. Saturday, 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. And don't miss The To Go Show with Kim Brown. Saturdays, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. I am Dr. Sharon Show. Each Sunday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Featuring The Grind, Entrepreneur Network Spotlight, and Write the Book Now. The Riri Williams Show, Fashion and Style Hour. Every first Sunday from 3 to 4 p.m. Real Talk 101, Sunday, 6 to 8 p.m. And every third Sunday from 3 to 4 p.m., the third Sunday Tea Talk Show with Dr. Akita Pearson. Gospel Live TV Show with host Gloria Mello each Sunday from 8.15 p.m. to 9.15 p.m. 
Listen to all your favorite shows on VoxWave.com. VoxWave.com. VoxWave.com, streaming your favorite jazz, blues, and R&B 24-7. Friday's edition of Chanel's Three Cents. This week we're here with my guest, the awesome, superb Miss Rochelle McAllister, the president and founder of Single Parents Alliance. Welcome, Rochelle. Hello, Kate. How are you? I Chanel? am just dandy. The sun is out today. That's awesome. I'm excited about that. So, <laughs> again, we're going to go ahead and just jump right into the show. For those of you that have been waiting, again, we thank you for patiently doing so. Um, Rochelle, if you could start off by telling us a little bit about your organization and how you got started and what motivated you to start sure. Single Parents Alliance. That will be my pleasure. Uh, my name is Rochelle McAllister, as Chanel just stated, and uh, the name of the organization is Single Parent Achievers. And what it is is that we pretty much, uh, it's about improving single parents' quality of life. And how I got started with doing this amazing organization is after raising four amazing children by myself after 10 years of uh, my marriage dissolving, um, it was just not enough support out for middle class single parents that were trying to make a difference in their children's lives and also their own. And so just in 2006, I had a wonderful you know, feeling to start Single Parent Achievers, but the program did not get started until 2012. So that's my reason for doing it is because of the pain and, uh, that I dealt with as being a single parent and knowing that um, uh, single parents do not want to do things alone. We find ourselves doing it alone, but we don't want to do things alone. So therefore, the program is to give that support. So it's more so like being a surrogate to, you know, anyone that's uh, doing it alone, just to provide that support. Okay, okay. Um, two things. One of the first things I heard you say, the name of the organization is Single Parent Achievers. Yes. Shame on you for not correcting me. That's you okay. Know, look, those of you that know me know that I'm always right. <laughs> and if I'm wrong, please correct me so that I can go back to being right. So we want to make sure go. that everyone knows that it's we are here with Single achievers. Parent Achievers. Yes. Um, the other thing that I noticed you mentioned, um, finding resources for middle class single parents. Exactly. Um, I believe that there's, um, and I talk about this all the time and we're going to continue to do so, mm -hmm. the resources that are out there for because most single parents, and I think it's almost 70%, live underneath the poverty level. Exactly. But for those of us that have tried to manipulate our jobs mm -hmm. um, and our resources, uh -huh. oftentimes, as you said, being in the middle class, mm -hmm. there are problems that we run into. Because there's not enough resources out here for us. And we're out here working for me. I work two and three and sometimes four jobs at a time mm -hmm. to take care of my family. And, uh, you know, it still wasn't enough, mm -hmm. you know, but I did what it is that I have, had to do where I did not want to go toward the system and anyone that does go into the system that's fine but it was something that I did not want to do so therefore what I was looking for I could not find mm -hmm. for middle class families and so for single parent achievers it's about helping them improve their quality of life and that's with parenting skills health and wellness and finances okay okay I have um, actually received an email last week from someone that um, that I actually ended up referring off to you mm -hmm. but she ended up talking about the problems with again being in the middle class mm -hmm. that she doesn't make enough to receive you know TANF services to mm -hmm. receive WIC services exactly. but she also doesn't make enough to make sure that all of her bills and expenses are taken care mm -hmm. of exactly and so I think that that was really important um, that you mentioned that because people do need to understand that when we're talking to people about um, a specific specific instance and some resources for them we want to be able to say hey well there's also resources for people that fall into a different category exactly because we certainly don't want to leave those individuals behind. and really I think that's a lot uh, with knowledge just providing the knowledge that's needed and then giving them that support so if, if we can make sure that they understand you know resume writing and preparing them for interviews making sure they have the appropriate clothing that's needed for the interviews there's so many things that we can actually do that we can allow or help 
the parent go out and get exactly what it is that they need in order to be successful for themselves and their children. Okay, now when does that start? I remember um, for me, the um, I guess what we call the home alone moment. <laughs> oh my God, you know, I'm a single parent. Right. Know, so when is it, when is our moment of awe when we realize that, you know, we're no longer in the relationship, mm -hmm. you know, either, you know, our relationship dissolved, our marriage dissolved, you know, we ended up becoming a widow or whatever. Um, when is it that you think that shock kind of sets in? I think it sets in when you know that you're the only one trying to make it all come together. <laughs> you're the one that's <laughs> You're the one that's sitting there, you know, I used to have this saying about, you know, pen and paper, they were my partner. And what I mean by that is because I love to write. Mm -hmm. And because I love to write, I used to write to God, like, let me write down any and everything that I need because I need so much. Mm -hmm. And it was trying to figure out, like, you know, for school supplies, for school uniforms, for so many different things that were needed, you looked and it's like, okay, that one check had to make sure it took care of all four of my amazing children at that time. And everything on that list. All, everything <laughs> on the list. And so that's when you have the aha moment and say, wow, okay, I'm really doing this alone. But we're doing it alone single-handedly in the natural. That's it, because most definitely the Lord most definitely made sure that we have everything that we need is in our, in our it's, it's, a, it's, it's there for us, but it's about the knowledge mm -hmm. and making sure that we have the knowledge that we need to go and get what it is that's there for us. So yeah, those aha moments came for me when it was like, okay, you know what? I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. And I'm talking about, you know all the things that we have to do. And for any single parent that's out there, you know all the things that you have to do. But um, I think that that's what it was for me. That was the aha moment to just say, wow, I have to take care of this, that, and the other. Is there, um and, and this may not apply to you, but again, feel, feel free to um, you know, answer as honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, we often see that as black women, um, you know, one, we have the, um, the angry black woman. Mm -hmm. um, that's me, depending on which day you catch me Which on. day? <laughs> <laughs> but we also, we often see that, um, again, once you hit official single status, mm -hmm. where a lot of us, based upon anger, mm -hmm. you know, and unresolved issues, a lot of us run into, I can do this by myself, I don't need no help. You know, and I, would you agree that that's what leads us down the wrong slippery slope to where we're losing those resources and time has gotten away from us to be able to capture them? I think that's because exactly it. Mm -hmm. And so that's what Single Parent Achievers is about. It's about helping you identify the rooted issues that are causing you to, that, that's hindering you. Mm -hmm. um, it helps you to identify, confront, and conquer. That's what we do. So it's about identifying those issues that we have that are rooted and embedded in us, and then it's about uh, confronting them one by one, because we did not get there overnight, and then figuring out how to conquer those things. But if we can do that, then I think that that helps us more so than being in that angry mode. You know, mm -hmm. if we're angry, it's like, you know, I think a lot of, I always talk about a power circle, you know, understanding what your power circle is. But if you really are angry, then you're really, possibly may not be able to connect with your power circle, but it's right there. When I realized and I got out of my mode of being angry and upset, you know, with being in my state, um, I woke up out of my, I was awakened, and when I, awa when, I was, when I awakened, it was like everything was right there. My power circle was right there for me to have everything that I wanted, but the anger was stopping me from mm -hmm. getting to where it is that I had to get to. So I believe that it's about identifying the rooted issues so that you can get the things that are rightfully deserving to you. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I think it's important for us to note that um, there's certainly nothing wrong with being angry. Um, we're trying to work on making sure that people understand that everything that you feel, your feelings are valid. Mm -hmm. What happens after? those feelings, you know, now that's something different. That's something different. Um, so you can hold on to it and move forward and or you can feel it, understand it, mm -hmm. and then make a decision afterwards. Um, someone mentioned the other day and I was actually watching on TV and the discussion came about, well, I'm still mad about this and um, well, I think I've gotten over this, but I think about it every day and I'm mad about it. So I'm like, okay, so you over it or you're not over it? Or well, maybe they go through seasons of it. It's like, I'm mad today, I'm better the next day and I'm mad again. You know, because there's different situations that come up that puts you back into that place if that if you're not healed, mm -hmm. it'll bring it right back to the surface. You know, you think you got past it, 
and it just came right back because you really didn't hear. Okay. Let's go, and I'm not going to play devil's advocate because, you know, it's usually just me and my thoughts anyway, not the devil. <laughs> so <laughs> we're not going to blame him. But now you have me at least, so <laughs> we're together with our thoughts. Um, all things, again, relationships, I have, um, I think it's really important when we're able to recognize that this is what happened in this relationship. And then I hear, often hear people talking about, well, I need closure, I need closure. And I love what Steve Harvey said about closure. You know, closure is for you and it's not for the other person. Exactly. And people always think that, oh, I need to do this. I'm, I'm a big fan, mm -hmm. and a lot of the research has shown that's not gonna help you, that's actually more of a hindrance exactly. when you're seeking closure. Right. Um, but I believe it's important to circle back with, now that this is over, mm -hmm. now that the relationship has ended, mm -hmm. Now I have to go back to being a single parent. Mm -hmm. Now I have to go back to making sure the kids get to school on mm -hmm. time, making sure they have clean socks in mm -hmm. the morning, you know, making sure that they have dry clothes. Exactly. And so I think it's admirable that your organization discusses um, that mental healing to make sure it's that so you can important. get to the next step. It's, it's very important. And just for the time that we've been in existence, um, I just love hearing the ladies when they are in the process of healing. I love it. I mean we have this moment where we have a, a time to share. And when they're sharing, you just, you could just feel the healing that has taken place over that time. And so we go through this for a whole year. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine within that year, you're sitting down and you're focusing on self. The one thing I've learned about single parents, because when I was one, um, it was, you know how like if you go to an event and they want to give you information, they give you all this literature. And as single parent, we're not about to, well, I did not read the literature. So, you read my slides? Yeah, I'm <laughs> a, a little bit. No. <laughs> but what I learned in Single Parent Achievers is when we pull everybody together and we do the work together, mm -hmm. I start seeing the transformation, the growth, the restoration, all that stuff just start happening because we're doing it together. Okay. Yeah, we're doing it together. So you're not alone. You're doing it together. And so we're sitting down and we're doing work together. When we talk about a time to share, they're able to share certain things that they have went through and how they've overcome. And then that helps another lady. And then that person goes through something, that person shares a time to share, share their testimony, and then, you know, that helps another person and then just keeps going. Yeah. Sounds like what I also hear you um, saying is you're – building an additional village and an additional community Amen. because we're doing it together yes, and when we we're talking together we're at the location mm -hmm. you know at the meeting spot um, our children are probably doing homework together they are. Um, they're probably having snacks together yes, they are. we're also recognizing oh your kid is in the same school district mm -hmm. as mine oh, okay well maybe we can connect and mm -hmm. maybe you can assist with pick up and exactly. or drop off exactly and or your kids a year behind mine you know hey we have some nice clothes that i was exactly. going to give away that's it so I also and know that, that that's support. important. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. so having it's that recreating support. the village. It's trying to recreate something that once didn't exist and now recreating it once again. And we, we're finding that within Single Parent Achievers. And I absolutely love it. I just love the support that comes out of the organization as a whole. Awesome. Awesome. We have um, a lot of the data centers around um, a single parenthood because most of them, again, happen to be women because mm -hmm. women have children right um, and our fathers are also a company but they come out of us mm -hmm. and then we work through that right um, the single parent achievers only service single mothers it's for single parents or it's for men and women and I you know when I thought about this in interview I was you know a call to action to the men you know come out and hear more about what it is that we're doing because we need you guys because understanding the perspective of a man is very important Understanding the perspective of a woman is very important. You so mean they're not the same? They're, they're not so the same. not the same. I thought you they know. Were <laughs> <laughs> and so we need you guys to come out. So it's a call to action that you guys come out and hear more and see what it is that you can actually do to make an impact in our lives, just as we make an impact in yours. That was one of the things that um, that truly drew me to you, Rochelle, mm -hmm. because you work with both men, awesome. men and women, mm -hmm. and oftentimes we hear that. The males, one, they aren't aware of the resources mm -hmm. and or for pride, um, you know, and their bros talk about, oh, you need to do this, you need to do mm -hmm, this. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't want to. Right. And I'm saying, and I know that you can um, piggyback on this, if you need help, you need to go get help. Exactly. And oftentimes, it's something simple. Exactly. And as women, again, not only going back to that angry black woman, but mm -hmm. that strong black woman, mm -hmm. oh, he's in here, he need help. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yeah, because yeah. we all do, and it's exactly. also changing the conversation about, mm -hmm. hey, how can I help this brother? Because we see them, That's, and we, you know, we see them in the grocery yeah, store with their two little kids, we and they, you know, trying to exactly. get them together, or exactly. you know, we see them at school, you know, hey, I'm trying to find, you know, waiting for my daughter, mm -hmm. you know, so mm -hmm. it's um, having that interaction and that connection. Do you see that your folks, that your parents are? intermingling well the males and the females well so basically the way that I you know the way that we have been able to bring the male in is by doing a panel discussion because for that it's more so they want to participate mm -hmm. in the panel discussion so right now we don't they have to be heard. male <laughs> members in our organization but we are looking for male members in our organization but to be a part of it they will come and be a part of it and I don't want to say that it's just to be heard, but they, I mean, maybe it is that they want to be heard, but we really don't uh, mind what it is that you uh, desire. We just want you to come out because I do believe that, again, as I stated before, that, you know, the impact that they can make in our lives and the impact that we can make in theirs is just, is, I mean, there's not a word for it. We need both to be able to come in. So we've done that through panel discussions. So, mm -hmm. and they, and the women, when we had the panel, they loved hearing the perspective of a man. And it was just like the man understood the perspective of a woman. It's like, wow, I didn't think like that. I didn't think about that. Mm -hmm. Because but I, we all need I to care. come together so that we can understand mm -hmm. what it is, you know? So, um, and even when we had our gala um, and the speaker that we had, uh, the young man that uh, came to the event, when she was given her testimony, it was just like, wow, I never thought of it that way. So it's the perspective. It's like, how do you look at it? But if we could actually just hear from, from the male and the male hear from us, I believe the impact would be great. Yeah, I, um, I, I'm always kind of laughing when I hear men say, oh, well, I already know that. I already know that. Mm -hmm. you know, none of us knows everything. Not exactly. But Oftentimes we hear, well, I don't want to hear that because my baby mama said that and I, and I don't care. But it's usually the same thing, but you're hearing it from someone else. You're hearing it from someone you know, else. So if your exactly. baby mom's saying, I need exactly. money for this or but I need you, you to show up for this, mm -hmm. exactly, it's a different it, receipt. It's a different, yeah. And the same with the women. Well, I don't want to hear, he said he had to right. go play basketball, but exactly. you're hearing. But you're hearing it from, and that happened. Mm -hmm. And in the panel discussion, it was just like an aha moment for everybody. So it was just like, whoa, okay, wow. Like just hearing it. And the discussion was awesome. Mm -hmm. Actually, we felt that we wouldn't be able to do it that way again. So you're always looking at how you can evolve and do things differently because it was really like the discussion they did not want to end. Aww. You know, and that was on both sides. And so we just have to figure out how to create an atmosphere that really allow uh, an impact to take place. And I really believe impact is everything. And so I. I keep saying the word impact, but I believe that, you know, that's what we're, that's what we're wanting to do that's is purpose. to make an impact mm -hmm. on the lives of single parents, and that'd be male and female. So, you got to figure out, what, you know, you and I, most definitely, have yeah, to figure I out how we're going to make It's hard for me to connect impact. with dads. I have no networks or connections that whatsoever. But <laughs> you don't? I think you do. <laughs> look, so, look, going into um, the next question that I have for you, when you get feedback and of course then you get inquiries from mm -hmm. you know either the single moms or the single dads what's the first thing that you guys do is there an assessment that you take of you know what their needs may be mm -hmm. or um, tr maybe ask some questions about you know do you have a specific set of services or some immediate need mm -hmm. what's the process that someone will go through from participating in single parent achievers mm -hmm. events versus becoming a member so basically for when we have our open house, our open house is on April the 28th. Um, and when we have the open house, we'll have people to come in. They are able to hear a lot about what it is that we do. Then after that, we have applications and everything that are, you know, that they fill out. Then we understand, we do like an assessment. And then through the assessment, then we put together strategic plans to help them in the area of parenting, health and wellness and finances by becoming better in those areas. Some may be okay. very well in finances, but they may be struggling in communicating with their children or time management, learning how to cook a meal in 30 minutes, or, you know, just, uh, it's so many different things that you can learn. And so someone may not need that, but they need this. And so it's about having that assessment and then putting strategies together for each one. And then we work on that for the uh, year that we're in session. Okay, okay. And I assume that there are um, strategic partnerships that your organi organization tries to set up to make sure that you're, again, capturing additional um, 
people that you want to service through um, other nonprofits and or local and county organizations that mm -hmm. connect with you? Yes. So we have uh, we have an organization uh, by the name of Building Hopes, and they work with the children. And then for single parent achievers, we work with the parents. And then I have another mentor into manhood, and they work with our young boys. Um, so far, we've had uh, two young guys that have went through the um, through their organization. But those are the ones that I'm partnering with right now. So mm -hmm. it's more so for me. I look at SPA as dealing with the family, uh, the male and female, and then we have something for the children. And I don't know if you saw on the website just recently where we partnered with um, the Glam Dolls and Spa Salon in Waldorf, where we oh. were able to take the young girls out and just have a pamper day and just made them feel like little princesses. And so that's another partnership, you know, even with Karen Thomas as well, and working with making sure that our kids understand who they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now so we partner with a lot of different. Where were the moms different. when the girls were doing this? They were, the were there, and oh. you don't even know, it was like paparazzi. It's like, <laughs> you have to look at the pictures. It was just like paparazzi. The parents were just so excited because it was something that they did not get an opportunity to experience as, as oh. children, but just seeing their children experience that had the little you know makeup glitter they had the little toes done and their fingers done and you know the ladies bought out like the little cups the little wine cup well, what not wine but you know, <laughs> it was a cute drink <laughs> with a little umbrella straw in it some Aww. popcorn and you know just really had a good time mm -hmm. so just looking at those pictures just give me goosebumps mm -hmm. just knowing that the children were so happy and the parents were as well so I would love to have some men there as well, bringing okay. their daughters or what was daughter thing um, for that one. But we also do things for, for the young boys as well. Okay, awesome, awesome. So and um, my next question kind of centers around um, something that I mentioned before. As a single parent, mm -hmm. what types of basic advice can you give to someone that um, is kind of at their wits end, um, they may have recently discovered that um, they, they've recently become a single parent. Um, I've had, I had this woman that sent me an email last week and um, in her email she stated that she doesn't know whether or not she's a single parent. She doesn't know? She doesn't know whether okay. or not she's a single parent. Okay. She's married, um, they're on the verge of separating, okay. but she doesn't want to consider herself a single okay. parent even though they're not living together. Okay. Um, so what types of advice would you help me give her as I'm still giving her the, huh? Right. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but how, how do you walk into that? I know we kind of talked about it earlier, but again, it's that advice on what are the next steps? What is it that you should be looking at? And I know you talked a little bit about starting that pen, but can you elaborate a bit more on how do we, how do we take this journey and make this something that's you know not a negative, but it's still something positive that you're a single parent and you have um, resources at your fingertips and you also have assistance. I think with that, um, I'm gonna go straight to healing. I don't think, you know, identifying that you're a single parent, okay, if you don't want to identify that you're a single parent, that's fine. But there is some hurt and there's some other things that you're gonna have to deal with in order to move on and to be able to receive God's bless best for your life. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that it goes straight into healing and trying to figure out like, who are you? Because once you go through a divorce, separation, whatever it is, it's like it just takes the feet up underneath of you and it's just like, okay, that's not what I expected the day that I walked down the aisle and got married. Mm -hmm. Or that's not the thing that I thought would happen the day that I fell in love and did this and it didn't work out the way I wanted it to. Or that's not what I thought was gonna happen when I looked when up I and did my this. husband was you know, in prison <laughs> or my, it's so many things. Or it's not the thing that I thought when I got the call mm -hmm. to say, you know, something has happened to your your significant other. I don't know, I just believe that there's so many things that happen and it just completely removes the feet from up underneath of you. And so I think that uh, creating the foundation of healing is the most important part, understanding who you are. And you can get that through coming through our program to determine who you are to help you identify those things. So if she doesn't want to identify right now that she's a single parent or she's co-parenting successfully or whatever that is. Mm -hmm. Maybe she's just not ready to accept that, but at least do what needs to be done to make sure that you heal and get the, get the help that you need to be surrounded by individuals that understand your story. 
and um, that can help you get from one stage to the other because everybody's everybody's journey is different mm -hmm. you know everybody's journey is different but I believe that we can we can get through it together so Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, I mean, I hope I answered that. No, no, no. Because at the end of the day, I answer, really, yeah. And I'm going to send her this video clip because, you know, I'm going to say something different. You know, See, I don't do the warm and fluffy. You and, know. And I don't think people watch me for warm and fluffy because <laughs> they certainly don't get it from me. But for my awesome guests. <laughs> You let us do it, right? Exactly, you let exactly. Us do it. Again, OBF is a resource provider, so I'm going to provide you resources. With the res but so. you know what I think, too? I think that uh, for me, I'm a type of person where I love transformation. So mm -hmm. if a person even does it, come to me and they say, well, this is where they are, like if she was to come to me and this is where she is, you know, I would accept where she is, but then help her get to the next phase. Mm -hmm. And so it's about, for me, it's about transformation. It's about coming and hearing a person's heartache and then figuring out how and what we can do through my experience and through different resources that are out here to help them trans tra transition. Excellent, so. and that's why I refer people to you. <laughs> and Because I'm about self-actualization. This, this is what it this is. This is what it is. This is what you're and dealing with. you need exactly. a hug, you need to go, go to Rochelle. To Rochelle. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I have, um, I actually had someone, um, we had this discussion mm -hmm. last year, and this young lady and I, we actually, um, she lives in a different state, but we uh -huh. have this conversation frequently the whole notion of I didn't sign on to be a single parent she's never married um, okay. long-term relationships mm -hmm. but she said I never signed on to be a single parent got it and I said yes you did you you knew that you were a single parent when y you had this child mm -hmm. and no I didn't I, he, I was expecting that he was gonna be there and I'm like I don't know why yeah I don't yeah. know why yeah if you don't have a ring that is the contract that you were not going to be a single parent. So yeah, you expected and you probably should have known that you were going to be a okay. single parent. Exactly. Because aside from a lot of the negative um, stigma that goes comes behind single parenting because of the um, you know, the government and as I've stated before, you know, all this started like back in the fifties where we realized, you know, the changing dynamics of the families mm -hmm. after the war. People look at single parents in a negative fashion. Got it. However, when you're at the school picking up your child, no one asks, are you a single parent? No, they they just want to know, are you here to pick, pick, your, pick kid? up your child? Exactly. What's your kid's name? Mm -hmm. okay, same thing, we're in a grocery store and you getting ready to buy groceries exactly. or if you're at the clothing store. No mm -hmm. one cares if you're a single parent. They just want to know, is your car going to decline? Exactly. They want to know, um, do you want to take the hangers home? Mm -hmm. you know, so again, mm -hmm. it's that that stigma is something that we need to address, but that whole notion of, well, I don't want to be a single, well, I'm not sure, you know, what you think you're missing by being a single parent versus, you know, being married. Right, right. It's a matter of how to allocate and how to receive resources. Exactly. That's all, that's all there that's is. That's it. That's all there is. That's it. I agree. Because I know a lot of happily married women whose husbands, they feel and vice like they're versa, single. yeah, and vice versa, exactly. men whose wives, you know, they're doing all the child rearing by exactly. themselves. And Without actually, we have married couples in the program because they feel like they are doing it, and, and, okay. and they don't have the support, but they, but they are married. Mm -hmm. And I'm and and be ready for marriage. Be ready for it because you might be happy that you just have you and your children. But if if you're not ready for marriage, but when you're ready for marriage, and stop looking. Yeah, look, watch my looking. face. Stop, stop looking. looking. <laughs> Let him find you, you know, let him find you. And that's a good way of just, you know, even for me, it's like when I was single, I took so many sabbaticals from dating because dating was just, I was just like, if you can take your finger, you know how they put the finger in the mouth, like, oh, I'll just make you gag. Oh, you know, see, I'm going somewhere else with that. So. Right. Okay. I really just took many sabbaticals from dating, and I thank God for giving me the love of my life. Thank God. But... It but you had a, a date lot. to get there. Like. It, it took a lot <laughs> to get there, and it mm -hmm. took a lot of healing. It took a lot of standing in my own truth, except for the fact that I was a single parent of mm -hmm. four amazing children, and deal with my life, and then there comes shoo, drop in. But most definitely, you want to be ready for marriage because you probably will be thanking God that you are not married and you just have you and your children versus you, your children, and your husband so or your wife because mm -hmm. it's for single parents, mm -hmm. and that's for male and female. So, yeah, be very careful about what you ask for. Okay, so that um, helps a nice little segue into dating, mm -hmm. single parents and dating. Um, I think that dating is an awesome thing. I also think that people need to understand what dating is. Mm -hmm. I believe people also need to be aware of the purpose of dating. And for women, I tend to hear from my men friends yeah. and um, the folks in our groups that mm -hmm. say that 
well, they all want to get married. They they meet me. They meet me, and they want to marry me. And of course, we hear that in church. Oh, you should right. be dating with the intention of marriage. Right. Okay, but everyone that you meet is not potentially not, marriage material. Not. Mm -mm. And you shouldn't walk in. Oh, I want to marry you, and I'm only dating to marry. That's fine and dandy, but you don't know if you want to marry this man. Exactly. He looked good. He might have a decent job. Mm -hmm. um, he's able to get his shoes to match his shirt and things of that nature, but. Mm -hmm. We need to realize that dating is to enjoy yourself, get to know exactly. someone. Exactly. So, for any advice for single parents on dating? You know, I would think the main thing, again, is for me, it wasn't a priority. Dating was just not a priority. My focus was my healing. So, I believe that hurt people hurt people. So, Therefore, and they mess, up, they mess up the dating pool. It just mess it up. And so I just think that it's a time when you are dating to get to understand who you are. Again, mm -hmm. it all comes back to healing who you are, you know, understanding who you are. Because if you don't understand who you are and if you don't have any values. Values. Whew. Not have them. Mm -hmm. And see what happens. <laughs> or, or misdirected values. Yes. Misdirected you values. know, and so, I mean, a question to, you know, anyone that's watching, you know, and, and I'm not saying that everyone don't understand that, but I in am. my program, we did I a, am. we did a, um, we did a, a, a program there dealing with our core values. And when we did that, you'd be amazed to know how many people were not aware of what their core values were. And I believe that if you don't know what your core values are, you stand for anything. And you stand for anything, the calamity is going to come and it's going to sushi right in your face. And then you begin to understand the choices that you made there, the choices that you made there. It was done off of not having a value system. So um, for dating, I believe for me it wasn't a priority, but for those that it is a priority, you, you want to date and you want to find the mate, uh, I really believe in just waiting on God. That will be me. Just wait on him to give, it, give you who it is that is rightfully deserving of you and you are deserving of him. So, uh, but you need to meet him through dating. You need to meet him. You need him, to meet, him, need him, to meet through him through dating because he's not going to knock and, on your door and, and say the Lord too, sent me. Yeah, and another thing too is move with slow motion. Like for me, I moved very slow. So that means that if he really did not have good intentions for me, he was gonna fall off mm -hmm. very quickly. So I just believe dating is very important. But if you move with slow motion, if you have values then you're gonna have those standards. And then as they see that there's not, you know, certain things that they can cross over, then you're gonna make your, you're gonna get to the one that's rightfully deserving of you. Mm -hmm. And so take your time, get to understand each other, date. And you being you know, deserving of them as well. Because it, everyone does way. It, Exactly, we and the chemistry. Mm -hmm. And then I learned too that, um, you know, really when we are getting married is to, for someone to help build the character, we're building each other's character for our divine purpose in life. And really, if that's not something that you're doing, if you're a mate, you meet someone and that person is not supporting what it is that you're doing, then it's just like you're, you're really being someone else. You should not have to be someone else to be in a relationship with someone else. You should really be able to be yourself. Um, it's so important, and I believe that a lot of times that even myself, you know, I went through that phase of, again, not really knowing who I was, that means I conform sometimes possibly to what it is that I felt that they wanted. So when you're dating, and, be and you. And wearing your mask. Exa and wearing mm -hmm. our mask, because we wear many of those, but if we begin to heal, then the mask begin to drop. And as the mask begin to drop, then we're able to kind of have what it is is rightfully deserving to us. So I just feel like, you know, for dating, move slow, understand your core values, don't stand for anything, and just again move slow. You really have to move slow in order don't to get. Don't be Susan Smith. Ooh, remember mm, Susan? Yes, Susan? I do. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm I, I'm really serious about that because for me it was very very important, and uh, moving slow was very important to me, and really getting to understand that individual. But at the end of the day, making sure that you know who you are because if you're dating and you don't know who you are, you stand for anything. Absolutely, absolutely. Now in um, in the in the um, the dating realm, mm -hmm. do you think that it's important when you talk about healing and making sure that you know who you are and know what you want, do you think it's important for us to be mindful of our circle? Because oh. frequently, I, I believe that we tend to get dis dissuaded mm -hmm. by our circle mm -hmm. because your mom, girl, you need to be married. You, exactly. got, you got a kid when you're going to mm -hmm. get married. Mm -hmm. and, or a dude, you, know, exactly. you need to do this, you need to make sure you're not getting married because you know women are this, this, and this. Got it. But being able to 
while you're listening to the advice from others, mm -hmm. making sure that you're making your own decision and what's best for you, not exactly. making decisions based upon what the community thinks and what might be best exactly. for you. Exactly, and that's very important. And I, you know, uh, for me, the influential people that were in my life were, again, Jewel Diamond Taylor and Jean Drummond, and they were older than me, but they gave me such great advice such great advice and um, the advice that I would say that I received from them is understanding if you for us as single parents we're already going through enough anyway right mm -hmm. so we really want to make sure that whatever it is that we're bringing into our lives the energy is positive it's not negative and so and that it balances and that it balances exactly and so for them they made sure that I did not move too fast I mean back to the same thing moving with slow motion understanding who you are you know, um, those were very important things that they talked to me about, about really getting to know myself. So those influential people in my life, they really just were a blessing to me. And they also were an example to me because of their relationships. You know, I, I was able to receive from individuals that were successful, or that not were, that are successful in their own marriages. They mm -hmm. were successful in their dating. And so I was able to get information from individuals that could really be a blessing in my life. And so, um, yes, my power circle is very, very important, and um, your power circle should be very important as well as far as making sure that whatever it is that you allow in your life, that it be of good and not of bad. Okay. So, okay. Awesome, yeah. awesome. So as we close, can you remind us again about what events you have coming up and mm -hmm. where our viewers can find you? Sure. So you can find us at www.singleparentachievers, with an S, uh, dot org and our next event that we have coming up is on April the 28th from 11 to 2 that's going to be our membership open house uh, we would love to have you guys come out um, one thing I will say is that our program is geared toward it, it's, 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 a, it's a private um, it's a private session that we have every year so once the open house takes place on April the 28th then we you know if you're not there to sign up or sign up before April 28th, then you would not be able to be a part of the program until the following year. So sign so up now. Sign up now. And connect now. And connect now. And you can still receive all of the information that we actually have, but you're not able to come into the session because we do a session. And in order for you to get what it is that you need, you can't come in and out. Um, can't do that in grade school, can't do that in college. And I just thought it was best can't do it not to do it yeah. in relationships. And so, therefore, uh, single parent achievers, that's the way that we have it because it allows the, um, the single parents to be open and transparent. Mm -hmm. And that transparency caused healing. So, therefore, just join us now. You can go to the website and uh, go to join us, and you can fill out the information there, or you can just show up at the, uh, or, or even when you click onto the website, you can join us on Eventbrite to come out to the function. It is free. Uh, to come out and hear more about our awesome organization. Okay, and where's the open house going to be? The open house is going to be, I have it right here, it's going to be at the MOVE Training Center, and the address is 1450 Mercantile Lane, Suite 157, and that's in Upper Marlboro, and that's uh, 20774, and you can get all of that off of our website. Okay, awesome, so. awesome. And what we'll do is we'll also put that information up awesome. on our website. I awesome. think we have you listed as a resource underneath our family services awesome. and mental health um, awesome. mental health section, but we'll make sure that our viewers are able to um, immediately connect with you and hopefully come out to the open house next week. Yes, so. and Chanel, I thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for inviting me and allowing me to share. Oh, girl, I get paid to do this. Oh, no, <laughs> wait, no, I don't. That's my other job. No. <laughs> <That's your> <laughs> <laughs> but again, thanks so much for coming out. You're Rochelle. so like very I said, welcome. We appreciate the opportunity for OVF being able to partner awesome. with you and assist awesome. in some of the activities that awesome. you have. Thank you, and guys. And we'll see you back next time. All right. All right. We'll see you guys back after this Woo! break. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think that, um, I think, well, actually, I don't. <laughs>
Okay, welcome back, welcome back again. We want to say thanks so much to our awesome um, guest today, Ms. Rochelle McAllister. And again, feel free to go to our website, www.obf4u.org, and you'll be able to get the information about the open house that's coming up next week, April 28th in Upper Marlboro. Um, just wanted to do a quick wrap up to let you guys know, um, as we normally do, um, it's important for us to stay connected and make sure that we're aware of what's going on in our community. Uh, for single parents, you all know that it's something that I talk about all the time, specifically because we are responsible for each other. Um, the basis of all things family life education um, is making sure that we understand the systems that we're connected to and how we can better improve our families. And of course, families are created when we have children and our children have children. So we want to make sure that we're um, being mindful to those, not only those hierarchies, being attentive and paying attention to our grandparents, making sure that we utilize them as resources because they're providers of wisdom and information. They may oftentimes be providers of food and additional shelter for um, our kids if you need to swap out daycare. Um, same with our moms and dads and same with our neighbors. It's an awesome thing to be able to connect with a community organization where you can meet another parent, um, a neighbor, someone that lives in your block that can help pick up your kids from school, someone that you can meet at your kids' basketball games or your kids' soccer practice that can assist in picking them up if you're running late. Um, going back into um, something that was said earlier, making sure that you have resources and you're aware of what's going on at your job, whether or not you're looking to get a better job or you're looking to make that next step up if you work for the government, that there are places and organizations that can help you um, and maybe not pay so much because we know there are a lot of people that charge because I, I can do that, but I'm going to charge you a lot. But they can help you improve your resumes. They can help give you tips about how to interview better for those positions and or give you background about that um, job that might be in the trucking industry and you don't know that much about it, but you have some interest. So you want to stay connected to the things that are out there and always ask questions. If you're not sure, make sure when you're at the website, you go, you know, click on the contact us link. Make sure if there's a phone number that you call. If you leave a message and no one calls you back, call them again. Everything that is out there for those of us that know that we are children of God, everything belongs to us. We just have to make sure, one, that we're ready and able to receive it. And so wrapping up, we want to say thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully we'll be able to catch you next Friday where we'll go into a little bit more all things family life education, taking care of our families, taking care of our neighborhoods, making sure we're attentive and accountable to what's going on in our local communities as well as being attentive to our government. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed everything that happened. We also hope that you enjoyed what was said. Um, but if not, at least you heard it if you didn't like it. And thank you again. We'll see you back next week.